When Satisfactory recently released Update 8, I wanted to get back in the game and try out the new features and quality of life updates. I had some ideas for new factories, but first I would need to build some power generation. What was supposed to be just some quick prep work turned into over 60 hours worth of exploration into how fluid dynamics work in the game. Today I'm going to show you how I failed, how I recovered, and how you can avoid my mistakes in your own builds. Since this was supposed to be the easy part, I went with one of the simplest power production lines that can be run at scale. Take a Mark II pipeline full of crude oil, refine it into heavy oil residue, then mix it with water to make fuel. Enough to run 133 and a third fuel generators, which produce exactly 20 gigawatts. With its abundant oil reserves, the Spire Coast is the perfect location for this build. A single oil extractor on a pure node, fully overclocked, fills an entire Mark II pipeline. And then the lesser nodes can be mixed and matched to fill a total of 7 pipelines. So that means 7 copies of our initial plan, which will give us 140 gigawatts worth of power. That's about enough for my future plans. There's no way this can go wrong. So this is my first build. It looks nice and functional, but up here you can see that I did not finish it. After around 15 hours I started to notice problems. Problems that could not be solved by just fiddling. First lesson learned, when building 7 copies of a thing, check that the thing actually works before spending hours on the copies. So I scrapped this save file and started a new one. And this time I wanted to do it correctly, efficiently, perfectly. By using the definitive textbook on the subject, the Fixit Incorporated Plumbing Manual by McGallion, link in the description. This guide is absolutely awesome and thorough. But if diagrams and pop quizzes are not your thing, here are some examples of how the lessons in this guide apply to my power station build. In the first build I started from the bottom up, since that's where my fluids come in. The refineries and blenders are on the bottom floor, and then the fuel is pumped up to the generators and distributed using simple manifolds. This layout is not a good idea, because fluids like to follow gravity. If this pipe is ever not entirely filled, the fluid will fall back into the rising pipe, and the input ports of the generators will be starved. Even if this happens only momentarily, it means we are not running at full efficiency. And we can't have that! My second build inverts the layering. Fuel is produced at the top and then falls down into the fuel generators. Likewise, the refineries and blenders are supplied from above. With this, it is much harder to starve the machine inputs, since fluid will buffer in the intake pipes. By the way, there is still upward flow at the very start, when we pump the inputs to the top of the building. But this is much easier to manage, since these rising pipes are point-to-point -point connections, without any fan in or fan out. I will come back to this once we get to how we feed the facility from outside, but first we have to finish talking about what happens inside. In the old build, I decided the footprint based on how much space the refineries and blenders take up, without considering the size of the fuel generators. By the time I sent three pipelines full of fuel to the second floor, there was only enough space for 45 fuel generators, even though I needed nearly three times that amount. So I had plenty of leftovers at the end, which I needed to send up to the next floor, and I foolishly decided to try and load balance those into just two pipes, because to have fewer rising lines maybe? I don't know what I was thinking there. But I was definitely thinking of fluid-like items. Items on a conveyor belt always go in a single, specific direction. But pipes do not have a set direction. If you have a junction cross like this one, but the supposed output is saturated, the extra input will just flow into one of the other input pipes. And then because of that the output becomes starved, and you can see how fluid just starts sloshing around in all directions. I tried to solve this by putting valves on everything. But the problem is, valves behave a bit weirdly when their input pipe is not full. Suppose you have a Mark II pipeline with a maximum flow of 600 cubic meters per minute and your valve is set to 300. You would think that anything less than 300 would pass right through the valve. So if we have 200 cubic meters per minute of input going into this valve, we would get exactly 200 cubic meters per minute output. 
what actually happens is that a half open valve like this one will only let half its input through. So half of 200 is actually just 100. I noticed in the edit that this explanation is incomplete. A valve only gives less output than expected when the input pipe is less than full. So if we have 200 coming in and 200 going out, that can be fine, as long as the machines downstream never consume more than those 200. If they want more, the pipes will eventually drain a bit and flow levels will drop to 100 cubic meters per minute as I said. Sorry for the confusion, but I guess this goes to show that pipeline behavior really is difficult to grasp. Remember how I was pushing everything up instead of down, and therefore my pipes were not full? By putting valves on the junctions, I just made everything worse here, and the pipes on the uppermost floor were even emptier now. The second build addresses these issues in two ways. First, more floor space. You can see that the refineries and blenders are spread out here. The fuel generators take the most space, so they dictate how big the building footprint has to be. Second, no more merging of pipes down the line. I noticed that 20 refineries and 16 blenders can be split evenly into four groups. Each of these groups gives 400 cubic meters per minute of fuel, which runs 33 and a third generators. Within each group, the generators are still organized into three manifolds with valves controlling the inflow. But now, because they are sitting on the lower end of a falling line, their input pipes are always filled to the brim and they behave as expected. Now that we have the piping inside the building all figured out, getting the oil to the facility should be the easy part, right? Right? Of course not! <laughs> the easy part is where there's a single pure oil node like this one, which gives 600 cubic meters per minute directly. We just send this in a flat pipeline all the way to the facility and pump it up to the top. Easy. But where I have oil from multiple normal or impure nodes, merging it together into a single pipeline gave me trouble. A plain junction cross like this one results in the same backflow problems that I described before. If the output side is tripping up even a little bit, we get backflow into the inputs. So we must have valves on these. Once the valves are on and the pipes are filled, Theoretically, everything should work correctly in a horizontal pipeline like this, and pumps should only be needed to push fluid up an incline, which I purposefully avoid here as much as possible. What I found in practice though was that sometimes the outgoing pipeline was slightly less than full, and the UI would show something like 595 instead of 600. That's not a big difference, but one big enough to eventually drain any buffer and cause generators to run out of fuel somewhere down the line. This problem only occurred in some places, so it seems to depend on the specific shape of the pipelines, which is dictated by the landscape to a certain extent. Some pipelines would cause trouble, while others that look very similar would show a straight 600 and operate without a hitch. After lots of trial and error, I found that these merging junctions can be made to output the full 600 cubic meters per minute by putting a pipeline pump on the output side. I cannot find anything in the manual that says why that would help, but it does. <laughs> I'm hearing on the subreddit that there are still some known bugs with the fluid simulation and the devs are aware and they will be addressing it in the future update. Maybe that's one of those bugs. Until it's fixed, this is my recommendation. If fluid flow is slightly less than what you expect, try putting a pump on it and see if it helps. As a final note, we are using valves here, so as I said before, everything only works at maximum efficiency when the pipes are completely full. When you build a setup like this, put power on the extractors, let all the pipelines and buffers fill, and only then put power on the final consumers. And there you have it, a smooth and sustained 140 gigawatts of power output without any glitches in the system. Uh, what's that you say? This is showing 200 gigawatts. Yeah, about that. I thought that 140 gigawatts would be enough for my build, but then I noticed that the fuel production takes a lot of power itself, so actually it's more like 120 gigawatts that comes out of this power plant. So I looked around and I found some oil near the red jungle and I built another power station in order to
Stink. <laughs>